You're in the middle of the Sahara. You see a huge awning with a red target pattern. Its surface is so hot you could fry food on it. A drop of water is to hit the center of this target at the speed of light. Theoretically and technically, this experiment is impossible to conduct. But if it happens, then mysterious nothing awaits us. And each version of this nothing will be different. So we'll do three drops. Option 1. It's better to do it from a great height or space. You take off on a jetpack into the stratosphere. You have a bottle of water in your hand. You pour out one drop. Let's say it starts accelerating itself. In this case, even at a low speed, a drop of water will burn up in the protective layers of the atmosphere. In less than a second, the drop will turn to vapor. Let's say our planet had no such protection as the atmosphere. The air resistance would still get rid of the drop. The drop is flying down at a tremendous speed. The cold wind turns it into an icicle. The greater the drop velocity is, the stronger the air resistance is. The drop is moving faster and faster, soon reaching the speed of sound. Then, it just smashes into thousands of small particles. Under such conditions, the drop will never be able to reach the Earth at the speed of light. Nothing happens because nothing gets to the target. The next attempt involves changing the drop. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, ozone, and other gases in the atmosphere destroy any falling object. But what if the drop didn't meet all these obstacles? You change the internal structure of water chemically. So you put your jetpack on again and grab a bottle of water. At the height of the Earth's orbit, you open it and pour out one drop. It accelerates and there's no resistance. It passes through the hottest layers of the atmosphere, but doesn't burn, passing the freezing temperature, but doesn't freeze up. It flies to the ground, developing the speed of light and crashes again. But nothing happens. The drop got the properties of a light particle, a photon. It's only under such condition that it might develop the speed we need. No object with mass, be it a car, a house, a tree, an ant, a single air, a grain of sand, or a molecule, can reach the speed of light. Only light particles are capable of it since they don't have mass. An intangible drop falls into the center of the target, and again, nothing happens. The third option. Scientists found a way to accelerate a drop to the required speed. They also have to change the molecular composition of water, making it more resistant to high and low temperatures. To make the drop reach the speed of light without any damage, you need to place it in a perfect vacuum. No air resistance, no protective layers of the atmosphere. We leave only space and the water. For this purpose, scientists need to build a long pipe. In the center of the Sahara, around the same target, people create a scientific center. From here, the pipe should go up. Its height is approximately the distance to the International Space Station. That's 254 miles, which is about the height of 50 Everest mountains. You can't connect to the ISS itself, as it's moving all the time. It revolves around the Earth, completing one revolution in 90 minutes. That's why astrophysicists and engineers should build a small station designed for one person. And this station should move parallel to a single point on the ground. The vacuum tube is made of solid stainless materials so that rain and high temperature couldn't destroy it. Inside, it's an alloy of titanium and graphene, the most durable metal on Earth. The pipe is built horizontally. Then, with the help of several helicopters and cables, it's placed in an upright position and attached to a small space station. The pipe is equipped with small pumps that pump the air out and block its flow inside. The water drop shouldn't touch the walls, so there's a special layer of gravity plates. They push the water away from the pipe surface, using the power of magnetism and sound waves. You put on a jetpack and fly to the station with a bottle of upgraded durable water. Your hands are shaking with excitement. Your breathing sounds loud in the spacesuit. You open the bottle, tilt it slightly, and pour one drop into a special box. Inside this container, the drop gets charged with the energy needed to develop the speed of light. Now it's ready for the journey. You look at the box, close your eyes, and press the start button. The drop flies into the pipe at a great speed. From the powerful blast wave, the entire station is thrown to the side. The drop accelerates, and at this point, the pipe made of the strongest metals on Earth begins to melt like ice cream. There's so much energy in the water now that it would be enough to provide electricity to a small city. And now, the drop reaches the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second. The pipe turns to dust. It doesn't matter whether the drop hits the ground or not, because there will be nothing. Literally, all material objects – cars, houses, fields, oceans, computers, planes, ships, flowers, trees – should I go on? – will disappear. 
Intangible things, such as gas, air, radio waves, electromagnetic radiation, billions of terabytes of digital information, all this will also be gone. Boy, are you in trouble. Any sound, shouting, music, the phone ringing, will be impossible to create and hear. The light will disappear, and then there will be complete darkness. But let's rewind time and see exactly what happened right now. It won't work, though, because there's no time either. Imagine time as a stormy river that flows rapidly in one direction. Then this river falls into an endless pit and disappears completely. All this happened because a drop of water crashed into our planet at the speed of light. As soon as a drop begins to approach the needed speed, it loses its properties of water. It's now the most powerful and heaviest object in the universe. The energy that comes from it destroys everything for hundreds of thousands of miles. Concrete, ground, rocks, etc., 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 and on and on and on, everything disappears. In the first second, it all gets shattered into millions of tiny pieces. Then these pieces are torn apart into millions of even smaller particles. The molecules burn up. Imagine a paper map of the world. If you wet it and tear it, it will turn into wet paper scraps. If you burn it, then part of the map will turn to ashes, and the other part will simply fly into the air in the form of smoke. The map will remain, but it will never look the same. But if you destroy the map's molecules, it's safe to say that the map never existed. There's no trace of its existence. The same thing happens to our planet. The energy coming from a drop of water makes the Earth never exist in space. And now the drop exceeds the speed of light. A black hole starts evolving. It expands and absorbs all the space debris. Then the Moon. Soon it will be the turn of Mars and all the other planets in our solar system. The black hole expands and increases the force of gravity inside it. Together with our planet, it absorbs light. It's getting closer and closer to the sun. Our star splits into strips of light as if it had passed through a huge cosmic shredder. The sun explodes and spits out an impossible amount of energy. It's believed that black holes appear after the explosion of stars. Right now, all the solar energy is being absorbed by our black hole. It's getting pitch black. The light from distant stars falls directly into the supermassive infinity. Meteorites flying within a radius of hundreds of thousands of miles around are also devoured into the unknown. There are many black holes in space, but only one of them was created by a small drop of water. The higher the speed of any object, the heavier it gets. Mass is the amount of energy that an object has. When water molecules reach the speed of light, their mass begins to grow. And there are no limits to this. It becomes infinite. An infinite mass forms a black hole. It absorbs everything, and nobody knows what's inside the black hole. All that remains is darkness and the unimaginable force of gravity. So I'm guessing here that we probably should not be doing this experiment, should we? How about we make a baking soda volcano instead? The speed of light is the fastest thing in our universe. It travels across space, passing through Mercury and Venus to reach us, and it's slowing down. No need to panic, though. The sun is getting weaker, but we won't see the effects of it for another billion years. In the vacuum of space, the speed of light is around 186,280 miles per second. Any slower than that, and humans would see the changes firsthand. There would be some awesome effects, like colors changing and the brightness of objects fading. We'd also notice some differences in everyday objects, their length and shape. Scientists created a simulation to see what would happen if the speed of light was slower. In a vacuum, the speed of light can't change. But if light passes through different materials and objects, it alters the way we perceive things. Light acts as a wave and a particle, meaning that it's a wavelength. The color and frequency are determined by the distance from crest to crest in the wave. It behaves similar to sound with the Doppler effect. Imagine you're standing in the middle of a busy highway and a honking car speeds through. (laughs) Wow, that was loud. You can hear that whoosh-like sound of the horn because the moving object produces the sound while you're stationary. The frequency and pitch seem to change, but it's just the sound reaching your ear faster than it would if you and the car were both stationary. Light behaves similarly. The wavelengths change if the speed changes. Moving toward a light source and making the wavelength shorter will shift the color to a blue and violet hue, moving away from the light source, and you'll get something more reddish. So if the speed of light slowed down to walking speed, we'd notice the colors changing when we approach an illuminated object. At the same time, the color would change around us and behind us. 
If you walk sideways, the colors you're walking toward would become bluer, and everything in the distance would become red. This information is useful to astronomers who are studying objects in space. If they're blue shifted, that means the object is moving towards us. And if it's red shifted, then it's going in the opposite direction. In fact, everything in the universe is red shifted, proving that the universe is expanding and getting further away from us. The slower it gets, the brighter it becomes. That's because the photons become more present for us to see. At this rate, we can see invisible light and increased intensity. You won't notice that effect much if you're standing still, but because of the Doppler effect, moving towards an object will have different colors and different light intensities. Another phenomenon we'd experience is time dilation. It's when you move at a similar speed as light and time decreases relative to someone who isn't. Space and time are relative, so if you're sitting at your desk wasting hours away, yeah, sounds familiar, doesn't it? All your movement will go through time and not through space. You're stationary, but you're still technically moving forward in time, slowly aging. The faster you move through space, the slower your movement through time will be. If you move at the same speed as light, then all your movement will be through space and not through time. To notice that, you'd need another person to watch you. You're not in a time machine. You're both on Earth, experiencing the same time flow. To you experiencing this firsthand makes it feel like you're going faster, because you're getting a lot more movement in space in a given time. The closer you get to the speed of light, the smaller you become. Well, not really, but it depends on who's watching. If you're the one traveling at such a speed, an object nearby will seem small, just as someone who's watching you travel at the speed of light will think that you're smaller than you actually are. The simulation that the MIT scientists conducted showed that if the speed of light drops, everything will become stretched out like a pancake. If you see mountains in the distance and then run at the speed of light, they will appear further away. Objects will become distorted and it will feel like you're getting to a certain place faster because time has slowed down for you. If you're standing completely still and someone standing on your left-hand side throws a cube-shaped object over to your right-hand side, then naturally, you'll see one side of it unless it flips around. But in this new reality, you'll get to see the front side wrapping around the visible side you're seeing. If you're moving at the same speed as light in an infinite space, everything will be stretched out as you reach infinite speeds. In a world where people can walk at the same speed as light, we'll perceive nothing as normal. We'll have to get used to the way we see objects. Every movement we make will result in drastic shifts of colors. Even turning your head to look at something will feel weird. Let's say you're in a supermarket buying groceries and you walk from aisle to aisle. The milk at the end of the counter will look like it's really close to you. But when you approach it, you'll start to feel like it's getting further away from you. The milk will also look a bit red. As soon as you get closer to it, it will shift to blue. If someone is passing through with a shopping cart, you'll see it as a sort of 3D model of a shopping cart. The color will shift as it gets further away from you. It will appear far away, but it's right in front of you. In fact, we don't really know the actual speed of light. Physicists gave it roughly 186,280 miles per second, but that constant is just for them to calculate other scientific stuff so we can understand it better. The problem is that we can only measure light with light beams and mirrors. But it's not like all we have to do is point a light beam at a mirror and measure its original path and its reflected path. Einstein's theory of relativity states that the original path of light moving from the source to the mirror may not be the same speed as the reflected light from the mirror back to the source. Hypothetically, if it takes light 10 seconds to travel from the source to the mirror and then back to the source, then we can conclude that each trip takes 5 seconds. But Einstein's theory is that it could take 9 seconds for light to travel from the source to the mirror and only 1 second from the mirror back to the source, or vice versa, or maybe completely different numbers altogether. That's why it's so difficult to measure light. A breakthrough came out for scientists when they managed to slow down the speed of light to zero without losing its brightness. 
They did this by using ultra-cold atom clouds made with photonic crystals. These crystals are materials punctured with billions of tiny holes where light can refract. But what if we lived in a world where light stopped halfway? You'd wake up one morning and feel like it's twilight. You'd open the curtains and see that many car lights are on but aren't so bright. You turn on the lights in your room but feel like the bulb is tapping out. You replace it with another one, but it doesn't do the trick. You turn on the lights everywhere in your house, but it's all just giving weak light. You're confused and try to check if there's a problem with the electricity in your house, but it seems to be working well. You check on your neighbors, and they also have the same problems. Even experts in the field can't understand what's going on. Hours pass, and it's all the same. All the light in the world seems to have frozen halfway. Your phone is low on brightness, even though you bumped it up to maximum. Everything is getting darker. You learn from the news that it's a global problem. Light is slowly diminishing, and soon there won't be any of it in the world. You decide to wait it out, while everyone else is panicking. Attention! Attention! Residents of all countries and cities of the world! A massive asteroid is approaching the Earth! Now its speed is several times greater than the speed of sound, and each day it accelerates even more. Once it enters our solar system, it will fly past Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars. The gravitational fields of these planets will also accelerate the asteroid, and our planet will be the final destination. A collision is inevitable. According to scientists, a meteorite the size of Mount Everest can destroy the entire planet. The disaster will happen in 350 days. There's panic in the streets. People buy and build bunkers. Scientists and astronomers from all over the world were assembled to find a solution. The only way to avoid the collision is to destroy the space object. Yeah, a powerful rocket can split an asteroid into hundreds of thousands of pieces. In this case, a meteor shower will hit the Earth. But it's better than the complete destruction of our home. In less than a year, people build several powerful rockets. Then, using the best telescopes in the world, astronomers create a unique guidance system. And now, we just have to wait for the asteroid to get into our solar system. All the people start moving to one continent with top-notch bunkers for everyone. The damage from the asteroid is impossible to predict, so it's better to hide people in one super large safe place to wait out the collision. The moment has come. The asteroid passes by Uranus. The speed increases. Now the colossal space object moves only 10 times slower than the speed of light. Scientists launch rockets into the air. The asteroid flies past Saturn and destroys a part of its ring. The asteroid's trajectory is changing. It flies past other planets through a twisting path, picks up speed, and now heads towards the Earth. The rockets leave a long trail of fire behind and reach the speed of sound. They're getting closer to the asteroid. Near Mars, a collision happens. The rockets hit the target. The asteroid explodes and splits into millions of particles. All the pieces fly in different directions. The Earth is saved. At this moment, the Earth's satellites record a huge burst of energy. A small part of the asteroid is headed towards Earth. It's tiny, about the size of a grain of sand. But the explosion accelerated it, and now the grain of sand is flying towards the Earth at a speed of 185,000 miles per second, which is 99% of the speed of light. At this speed, the grain has almost the same destructive power that the entire asteroid had. It's approaching the moon. A few more seconds, and the grain of sand will hit our planet. All the people are waiting with bated breath. The grain gets such incredible power because of the laws of physics. The greater the speed any object is, the more mass and energy it has. When the grain of sand reaches a speed close to the speed of light, its energy and mass begin to increase dramatically. You can't even see this tiny grain of sand, but inside, it has the mass of an entire continent. If the grain reaches the speed of light, its mass will be infinite. And then, a black hole will appear. In this case, all living and even inanimate things on the planet will disappear. Trees, seas, and oceans, all the cities, countries, and continents. Air, sound, atmosphere, any molecule of the Earth. 
everything will be absorbed by the incredible gravitational force of the black hole. Then, when there is no trace of our planet, the hole will take over the moon. The gravitational force will grow and absorb other planets of the solar system. Soon, it will reach the sun. Our star will split into thousands of strips like spaghetti and will emit a tremendous amount of energy. This could trigger the birth of a second black hole. But fortunately, we only have 99% of the speed of light, which changes everything. Also, no object that has mass can reach the speed of light. The grain of sand enters the Earth's atmosphere. From the outside, it looks like a blinding meteor that pierces the sky. The grain heats up, passing through the layers of the atmosphere. Clouds within a radius of 100 miles around are burning up. The sky becomes crystal clear. If you look at it in slow motion, you can see the air is ionized because the air molecules are split. In nature, this process occurs during lightning flashes. Our sun also has ionizing energy and disinfects the air. The meteorite leaves an ozone hole behind it. So now, this place is not protected from space radiation and ultraviolet light. The grain of sand flies straight into the center of the southern ocean. The closest continent to the explosion is Antarctica. The air around it warms up and mixes with the cold temperature of the ocean, creating hurricanes. As soon as the grain approaches the ocean surface, the water starts boiling. The temperature and energy of the grain are so huge that the water evaporates, but the vapor molecules are instantly burned up. Thousands of gallons of water just disappeared from the face of the Earth. The grain flies down for the first few feet without touching the surface as the water evaporates before it. Then it falls into the ocean and creates a powerful explosion. Hundreds of millions of gallons of water foam and boil because of the hot temperature. The entire ocean within a radius of 100 miles is illuminated with a bright light. The ocean depths, where sunbeams have never been before, are almost as transparent as the water at the bottom of a pool. The wreckage of old sunken ships splits into atoms because of the powerful explosion. Unknown sea monsters and giant squids that live in the dark are afraid of the bright light and swim away. Then, finally, a grain of sand touches the seafloor and penetrates deep into the Earth's crust. If it reaches the Earth's core, the planet will most likely explode from a burst of incredible energy. Fortunately, this is not going to happen. The resistance of the ocean and the ground slows down the grain and takes its energy away. It provokes a slight shift of tectonic plates, and there's more to come. Huge waves form and spread throughout the ocean. The blast wave creates enormous tsunamis. Imagine throwing a small rock into a puddle. The same thing happens to the ocean. Huge waves are approaching the coastal cities. Fortunately, people were evacuated from there, but the damage caused by one grain of sand will cost hundreds of trillions of dollars. Houses are destroyed, roads are flooded. After a while, it starts raining with hurricanes. Ocean water vaporized by the grain forms into huge storm clouds. The wind drives them to the continents. And then, after the tsunami, prolonged rain begins, flooding entire countries. Several days later, natural disasters are still here. The temperature of the Southern Ocean has increased by several degrees. The water is boiling at the collision site, melting the Antarctica glaciers. Millions of icebergs are melting away, so the water level of the world's oceans is rising. The edges of some continents go underwater forever. Thunderclouds reach the Sahara and other deserts. The shift of tectonic plates causes earthquakes on some continents. Volcanoes are awakening. The sky is filled with volcanic ash. It will take months for all the ashes to settle. In the beginning, it creates challenging conditions for life on Earth. Plants and all living things don't receive enough sunlight. In trees and seaweed, photosynthesis is disrupted. Oxygen production stops. It's getting harder to breathe. The air that has filled the planet's atmosphere is slowly running out. People have to adapt to new conditions. They build new cities both on the land and in the ocean. They create plantations with artificial lighting for photosynthesis production. Fortunately, all the problems end when the ash settles. 
Inside the volcanoes, there's hot magma flowing. It may come in handy, as it's rich in chemical elements and minerals. Together with the ash, nutrients fall to the ground, and the soil is now well fertilized. Plants, trees, fruits, and vegetables grow incredibly fast and produce a lot of new oxygen. The Sahara is filled with blooming flowers now, and it looks more like a meadow with flowers, not a desert. The grain of sand just renewed the planet instead of destroying it.